So in this problem, we're told at an accident scene on a level road, investigators measure a car's skid mark to be 98 meters long. It was a rainy day and the coefficient of friction was estimated to be 0.38. Use these data to determine the speed of the car when the driver slammed on and locked the brakes. Why does the car's mass not matter? So the first thing we got to do is draw what's going on and try to understand it. So we have this car. We know it's going to hit on the brakes and it's going to travel for 98 meters and then it's going to come to a stop. And so at this point, we know the velocity is zero because it's stopped. Uh, they also give us the coefficient of kinetic friction. They tell us is 0.38. And what we're trying to find is the velocity of the car when it started or right when it slammed on the brakes. So how are we going to solve for this? So the way we're going to do it is by using the law of conservation of energy, which basically tells us the energy at the beginning of the interval, we'll call it E1, has to be equal to the energy at the end of the interval. So we know the energy here has to be equal to the energy here. And so the way this generally works is you add the kinetic energy, which we can denote by K, plus the potential. And that's going to be equal to the kinetic plus uh, the potential at the end. So K1, U1, K2, U2. Uh, but the thing to keep in mind is the potential energy uh, for both of these are going to be the same value. And we can assume that this is basically zero. So imagine. Uh, so u is denoted by mgh that's the formula for it and so h in this case we can just pick any height to be what it uh to be what it is so we can basically say the height is just zero so the height actually doesn't change therefore mgh h would just be zero meaning uh u would be zero so both of these u's they're basically the same value and they cancel so all we're really looking at is the kinetic energies but the other thing you have to keep in mind is energy lost or gained as a result of the work. And so we know that there's going to be a force of friction that's going to be stopping it. So the way you can imagine it is we have some energy in the beginning, and that's going to be, uh, and then this is going to be equal to the energy at the end, but we also subtract energy uh, lost as a result of friction, which is uh, the work done by friction. So we have energy in the beginning, we lose some, and that gives us the energy at the end because we know we're losing energy from friction. So this is really the formula we're going to use to solve. Uh, but we have to break it down a bit. So uh, the formula for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So this is the formula you use. So we could write this as 1 half mv1 squared minus w equals 1 half mv2 uh, squared. And so what we're trying to do is solve for v1, because this is the velocity at the beginning right, beginning and then end. Uh, but notice the velocity at the end is actually zero because uh, this is the velocity when we end. So V2 is zero, meaning uh, this whole thing is zero. So this whole term basically just goes to zero. And it's zero because we come to a stop uh, at the end from the brakes. So this should tell you that one half MV squared is equal to the work done by the friction. And so how do we find the work done by the friction? So the work due to friction, or the work formula in general, is force times distance. So if we know what the force is and we know what the distance is, we can calculate what this work uh, done is. So keep in mind, uh, we know the force uh, that's going to be doing this work is the force of friction. So it's equal to the force of friction multiplied by the distance. And now what we need to solve for is the force of friction, because if we have that, we already know the distance being traveled is 98 meters here. And so we would just plug it in for work and solve for V. So uh, what we need to do now is solve for the force of friction. So the formula for force of friction is equal to mu sub K times the normal force. So this is the formula for that. Uh, how do we find the normal force now? Because we need that to find the force of friction. So we know the only two forces acting in the Y here are mg, which is the force due to gravity, and F sub n. And so it should be pretty obvious that F sub n equals mg. You should just know that by now. But uh, the way we show it is by summing the forces in the Y. So the sum of the forces in the Y equal mAy, which is the acceleration in the Y. Notice we're only moving along the X here. So I'm denoting this axis right here as the X, and this is the Y. So we only move along this X. Therefore, velocity in the y is zero, which means acceleration in turn is zero. So some of the forces in the y equals zero, and then zero equals, and we sum up the forces. So it would just be f sub n positive because it goes up, minus mg, and then moving it to the other side, 
f sub n equals mg. So it should just be pretty obvious by now uh, based on other units. But basically, mu sub k times mg is your force of friction. So now we can plug this in for here. So uh, force of friction is mu sub k times mg, uh, and then work we would multiply by the distance. So work equals mu sub k times mgd. So substituting that back in, you would get mu sub k multiplied by mgd. And so this is where the one part comes in. Uh, notice that on each side, the mass actually cancels. So when they ask, why does the mass or why does the car's mass not matter? We can see that it actually just gets canceled out. So regardless of the mass, it's going to have uh, right the same value. So its mass doesn't actually impact it because it cancels on both sides here. So uh, what we have here is 1 half v1 squared equals mu sub k uh, gd, uh, multiplying both sides by 2, uh, would give us v1 squared. And we're getting it by itself because we're trying to solve for this velocity. So uh, you would square root both sides to get rid of that squared. So v1 essentially equals 2 mu sub k times gd. And we know all these values. Um, let me just plug them in here. Uh, let me make this bigger. So we have 2 mu sub k, the coefficient of kinetic friction. They tell us that value. Uh, we know it is 0.38. So just plug that in. Or 0.38, sorry about that. G is the acceleration due to gravity. It's just a constant value, which is 9.8. And then we would just multiply by the distance. So we know the distance being traveled in this case is uh, 98 meters. So this distance was from this work here, which was force times distance. And the force being applied is friction. So friction is being applied through this entire interval, right, from the break. And so uh, we know this is going to be 98. And then, yeah, so now it's just a matter of plugging it in. Let me go ahead and do that. So we have second square root of 2 times 0.38 times 9.8 times 98. So you would get 27.0167. So I'm just going to round 27 meters per second. This right here is going to be your velocity. So uh, they say it uh, uses data to determine the speed when the driver slammed on the brake. So they're going to be traveling 27 meters per second uh, at this point in time. So uh, just to recap of what we used to solve this problem, all we did was use the law of conservation of energy, and then basically we had to account for uh, the energy lost as a result of the force of friction. And then it's just a matter of solving for uh, these values and plugging in, and then that gives you your answer there. So uh, yeah, so this is going to be your answer, 27 meters per second, and hopefully you found this uh, video helpful.